Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, and NBs, and thank you for tuning back into St. Andrew TV, a cure for your Monday blues. I'm your host, Andrew, and today we are revisiting a video I did very early on in my channel because we have grown tremendously over here on St. Andrew TV. The video we are revisiting today is how to make hardtack, the ultimate survival bread. This edible product is as hard as diamond. It goes back 6,000 years. And after this introduction, I'm gonna show you how to make it. in the introduction I'm going to show you how to make hardtack and this goes back like I said 6,000 years but was not mass produced until about the 1600s in Britain this was used by natives pioneers soldiers explorers you name it this was the utility food for everyone and their brother and it only takes three ingredients to make and that is flour salt and water. The first ingredient of this very simple recipe is two cups of flour. Now this is just all-purpose flour, mind you. Do not use self-rising flour. It will not work out in your benefits. The second thing we are going to add is a teaspoon and a half of salt. That goes in there. And then the last thing we are going to add is three quarters of a cup of water. And we have that good Phoenix water. So, little extra nutrients in there for you. Now, my mom raised somebody who is not modest. So, I don't have a wisp or anything. We are actually just going to go in like our Old West and Pioneer Brethren would have gone in there. We're going to use our hands and mix this up and get ourselves a nice, big, helping heap of dough. I should mention as I'm kneading the dough here that add flour accordingly. You don't want your dough to be sticky when you start cutting this into the little biscuits or cracker shapes that you so prefer. All right, put a little flour down so it doesn't stick to this table that has not been washed in ages. All right, here's the fun part. Now you just roll it out. And before I get the comments, this Rolling pin isn't historically accurate. I, I got it. Okay, does it make you feel better? I won't even use little handles. I know, I got it. Now here's a good pausing point to let you know that the thickness of your dough here should be anywhere between a third of an inch or a half of an inch. And that is really depending on how thick you want your crackers, obviously. I would stick to a uniform thickness because you're gonna probably recycle dough, you're gonna cut it into squares, then you're gonna take the access dough, make more squares. You want this to all bake at the same pace, so try to keep it uniform with the thickness. All right, this mess in front of me is the thickness I'm going to go with. All I'm gonna do is cut off these loose ends here, Like so. I know this knife isn't historically accurate either. I got, I got it. All right, here's our access dough, like I said you were going to have. And how I look at it, what do we got? About eight, nine inches up here. Is that about six to seven right there? I'm gonna try to cut this into thirds going this way. Something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, you're gonna Shove this in your knapsack and you're going to forget about it. This is good for about three to four years as long as you keep it dry. If you don't keep it dry, then you're going to have yourself a worm castle. Fun fact, when they were actually transporting flour in their big knapsacks, if it did get wet, that's where the name came from, is worm castles. They would get their hardtack, or I guess the flour that would become hardtack, hypothetically, they would open up their knapsack full of flour and there would just be larva galore 
and I don't think I need to explain why that would be bad news bears, Walter Matthau. Next thing we're going to do is take a toothpick, and we're going to make these look like little saltines, because we have fun here. And all I'm doing when I poke holes in these, I'm allowing the heat to get through all of our little cracker here, and it'll cook more evenly if I do something of that nature. Okay, so now that we're here, I'm going to spare you of me rolling this out. You you got the gist of it. I will, I will not waste this, but you won't see me roll out the extra dough. They should look something like this. And this is where you have your oven preheated to 375. And what you're going to do is place them on a baking tray. That looks like this. Look at that, I made it materialize right out of thin air. Anyway, like I said, 375. And you are gonna cook them on one side for 30 minutes. And then after that 30 minutes concludes, you are gonna take a spatula, or if you're feeling daring, your bare hand and flip them over and you're going to reinsert them into the oven and cook them for a, another 30 minutes. And after that, you have just made yourself your first batch of hardtack. Look at how pretty that is. And after you remove them from the oven, after your hour of bake time, they should look something like this. And like I said earlier, these are good for three to five years, given you keep them in a dark, and dry place. And here is the next part which is very important. These are not soft crackers, these are not little biscuits, these are not saltines. You can't just chew on them. That's probably how they got their nickname of molar breakers. You take them in this coffee or broth or water, something like that, and they are supposed to soak. You can probably see how it's going on right there. These were meant to sustain your hunger uh, I guess, so to speak. Flour and salt naturally retain water, and when you put them all together and then proceed to dip them in some sort of liquid, whether that be broth, coffee, or water, it gives you the illusion of feeling full. It was kind of a makeshift way of, you know, perusing through the frontier on horseback or maybe you're out hunting through the woods or something, gave you the illusion of feeling full. I do believe that the caloric intake of one of these crackers or biscuits is less than what it actually takes for you to chew it up and eat it. So that's interesting. But I've given this about a minute to soak in some pretty hot coffee. I don't know how well it's going to taste in terms of how long I let it soak, but... Well, it tastes like it did the first time I made these. They're very bland, but soaking in coffee does help. I bet this would make a very good base layer to maybe a stew or a soup. Maybe if you put it in your bowl first and then poured the broth and all the good ingredients on top of it, and then ate this last and got all the flavors and soaked up some of that broth. I bet that would be pretty good. However, we have just created our first batch of hardtack together. Hopefully, I helped you guys out today with a little bit of a survival food that our frontiersmen prior to us, our Wild West brethren, the soldiers in the Civil War, Native Americans, they all used this very simple recipe to create the same thing that we did here today. This also sets us up for a future video called Hellfire Stew and we need to learn how to make hardtack before we make hellfire stew. Thank you to everyone who has made it this far into the video. I really do appreciate it. Please leave a like if you've enjoyed today's video or leave me a comment stating what you liked or tell me what I should do next. Per the recording of this video, I have a Patreon that is up and running. I would appreciate anybody who can find the means to support the channel. Everything here is fan funded and I would like to keep it that way. However, only donate to the Patreon if your means allow you to do so. If you can't, do not worry about it. The content on YouTube will always remain free. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed as of late. We are north of 31,000 subscribers and I could not thank you enough. But for those of you who have come across this video because you found this channel by accident. Maybe you wanted to learn how to make an old Civil War recipe. Or maybe you just came across me by accident and thought, wow, that guy wore a black vest when he was dealing with flour. 
that wasn't too bright. Think about hitting that subscribe button, because you're a daisy if you do.